Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's start this series here, once again based on your new suggestions. Thank you so much everyone for all the new amazing suggestions, well over 20 plus, now going to 30 plus suggestions, and then some when it comes to the type of info I can pick for here. So, thank you so much everyone for that, I'll be doing a good number of videos. This one immediately caught my attention because of the name associated with it. Once you hear a name like this, you immediately just think to yourself, you have to research this information and you have to showcase it to everyone here. But yes, it's apparently a griffin-like cryptid, something that terrorized the location there in Richmond, Vermont, and in one other area in Berkshire, Vermont. And it has to do with this. You're looking at it now. The name is known as the Awful. That's correct. That's its name. It's known as The Awful. No other name really associated with it. So again, what an eye-catching name. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating information associated with this The Awful creature and then highlight how it apparently had just a quick spurt of appearances way back when in the 1920s and then has been pretty much gone, although there have been just a few, very few tiny appearances afterward. More on that here in a minute. But yes, so what was this The Awful? Well, The Awful was apparently a griffin-like creature that first began to be seen there in Vermont, specifically in Richford, Vermont, and then later in Berkshire, Vermont, in 1925. No exact date, like in terms of something along the lines of a month or a day, but cut it to around that time period, and then that's where people started to see this unknown flying beast. Whatever it was, it apparently decided to make a quick home right over there in those areas, and then it caused these sudden appearances there. First, let's talk about its actual appearances altogether. When you think of the name griffin you immediately think of a winged beast well that's essentially what this thing was it was apparently very very large it had a 20 foot wingspan imagine something like that what's that almost like a a bus when it comes to a school bus size it had a grayish color associated with it, it had a very long tail that was considered serpentine i don't know if that exactly was because maybe it had scales tied to it or if it was just long and then it would just undulate and move back and forth like a snake would, something along those lines. But by far one of its most uh, outstanding features were its claws. Its claws were talons, just immense talons, the kind of stuff that were apparently so large. And again, this being back in the 1920s, people stated the ones that they saw, the claws, that it could easily grasp an old style milk can, which you're looking at a picture of here. Imagine the size of this thing. These milk cans were not small by any chance. And here you have these talents that could easily just hold its circumference around it and then be able to use it, no doubt, for great strength, crushing whatever was within its grasp. Well, this was essentially the griffin-like creature that was there in the Vermont area during that time period. And then that's where, again, those sightings first happened. In fact, the very, very first sightings apparently befell two unfortunate mill workers that happened to be their sawmill workers and what had happened was this this was in richford vermont to be specific i don't know if they were going to work or coming back from work and i don't know if this was necessarily the daytime or the nighttime but the story goes that they were crossing the main street bridge that you're seeing here and at that time all of a sudden something caused them to look upwards and when they did so right on top of the rooftop of a building that was called the Borite Building, which I believe is one of these two buildings right here, that's when all of a sudden they saw this thing just glaring down at them. It was just menacingly just looking at them. It probably gave them that sense. You know how you have that sixth sense when something is staring at you from a distance where you suddenly turn around or at least look in the direction like your body tells you exactly where it is. That's what I got the sense of what happened here. There they were, these men crossing these Main Street bridges bridge and then that's when they looked up and they saw this thing it didn't do anything really to them 
It didn't attack them. It didn't fly down and try to carry one of them away. All it did was just stare at them very, very menacingly. But it was enough to actually cause a heart attack, a fear-induced heart attack to one of those men. Can you believe that? The sight alone of this creature was enough to cause one of them to go into a full-blown heart attack. Luckily, though, he was able to go home. He made a full recovery. But even then, for weeks on end, this poor guy, whoever this was, whoever this anonymous this person was was still suffering from nightmares associated with this this creature in fact so much so that he would wake up screaming in the night alerting his wife and his children about this beast about whatever this griffin like monster was and of course there they were worrying about him so much about what occurred and what was continuing to happen to him now but he suffered these type of i guess PTSD attacks afterward and from it that's where again uh, legend of this the awful came about I think that's why the name eventually became the awful because anyone that encountered it or saw it just had an awful experience it was either so awful to look at or the events that happened to them afterward were so awful that's essentially where people I guess got the name from but cut to that time period to the next few months that's when more locals started to see this creature in fact, there were farmers who stated that they saw it soar above their fields, but no doubt using its eagle all, almost like eyes to be able to see from a far distance up above, trying to find its next prey but it would never really land near them. Residents also saw it within their land too, sometimes on the rooftop of their homes. One person was a lady by the name of Oella Hopkins. She stated that she was hanging up laundry outside one day when her family dog alerted her that there was something nearby. It did that thing that dogs do where they just bark like crazy. You know, when something is just completely sending them off and you're wondering what is going on, that's a good telltale sign, of course, that there's some danger ahead. And then that's what this dog was doing and so when she looked at where the dog was looking at that's where she saw this awful this the awful it once again it was perched on top of an area in this case her home just staring at her again in a menacing type manner she quickly ran inside hopefully she did so with the dog too and then as she was staring as she was there she saw that it had moved over to a farmhouse roof and then it was again continuing to stare at her so she hid under the bed can you believe that under the bed for the next few hours just making sure again that she was completely safe and that there was nothing that this the awful would do to her afterwards and nothing really did happen in fact most of the sightings seem to be of the same circumstance the same thing that happens afterward it will just look at people it will just stare at them it would create this kind of unease, but then that was it. No one else really had any bad experiences associated with them. There was one sighting, apparently, of this creature. People saw it holding something or clutching it within its talons, and it was either, unfortunately, a baby or a small animal, although, again, considering how it seemed to just stay away from humans as far as harming them altogether, most likely it was an animal. So that's the closest anyone really saw to this creature be able to do something like in terms of an attack or holding on to some prey related to attack but yeah between those months and then extending upwards to 1928 so just about three years after its first sighting that's when that was it it pretty much dried up no one else saw anything as far as this creature sightings of it died down altogether and then apparently cutting into decades later every now and then someone would see something like for example there was a lady by the name of lisa maskell she said she saw something there by a river called the trout river when she was a child she didn't have no idea of course what this could be and her childlike brain at the time was not necessarily thinking that it could be an out of the ordinary or out of the world type creature but it was only later on when she saw a rendition an artist rendition of a pterodactyl that's when she realized it cut to her mind, you know, what she saw as a child, that this is what was there. This was what was there, right there by the Trout River when she was younger. And so, again, that just goes to show as far as these reports, it went really, really down when it came to sightings or new sightings. And then that was it. One interesting link, though, as far as this creature, although it kind of remains 
more of a legend, maybe unfounded, but still it's good to share here. This creature may have inspired H.P. Lovecraft and several of the stories that he made. He, of course, is famous for the macabre-like stories, the horror-filled stories that he has created. He, in turn, influenced so many other writers, including Stephen King, who was a big influence like on The Mist and others that are tied to H.P. Lovecraft-type stories. But yes, apparently, H.P. Lovecraft heard about these sightings back in the 1920s, and he went to investigate. He went to look at the areas there. He interviewed some of the locals about their encounters, and apparently, again, that influenced some of his own writings. But again, some of this seems to be in dispute, so someone might have to point more information if H.P. Lovecraft really did this or not. But if he did, how about that? A little bit of life imitating art and vice versa when it comes to uh, this famous writer, especially when it comes to his works. But as far as anything else tied to this creature, that was pretty much it. It hit that area there uh, within that time period of the 1920s, and then that was it. And then maybe some sightings here here and there. Apparently it was also seen in another location called Berkshire Field near Lost Duration Road. And then uh, no one else has really seen it after, or maybe it died out, maybe it moved away to another area, but who knows, maybe it might even be seen sometime in the future. But if anybody has any more info, anything else I might have missed, then please post those comments below. What about those of you that are there in the Richford, Vermont? Next time you cross that bridge, be sure to take a stop and look around. Because at that exact bridge, that's where, again, this cryptid was seen by these two sawmill miners. I love history like that. I love whenever there's an exact location that you can actually go to and then stop at that exact point, like down to a GPS map location, and then have it something there, like in terms of history and the world of cryptids. It reminds me of the infill horror and how I was describing that in one of my past videos there. But again, any more local information, let us know. All right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care.